Well then, welcome to another episode of Driving to the Res with your favorite hosts, Larry and Inelia. See how I pronounced your name right? <laughs> <laughs> I done, done good. I you got done my power. good. You done good. You're gonna read it this time. Really? Because you have no glasses. Well, oh, your glasses are in your. Oh, I found there them. You, you found the glasses. There you go. This. Cool. Oh. Alrighty. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Protects it. What? Power here. objects. Yes. Sigils. Yes. And occult symbology. Mm-hmm. Occult? What is occult? Hi, hidden. Hidden is occult? Mm-hmm. It's got, is occult negative in some way? Nope. Oh. It's just hidden. Are there bad occults? <laughs> that's that's my uh, rubos chai. <laughs> Your rubos chai. Rubos chai. Occult means hidden. It Are hidden have... things general? Sometimes hidden things are bad. That's why they hide them, right? I mean, they're yes. good and bad. Sometimes they're powerful. I mean, and some people are not ready to. Like you know, you when you have a toddler around the house, you hide your knives. So the knives are occulted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some occult is just hiding. Some people hide stuff. Hide people hide stuff for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Just Hidden, because it's occult of, yeah. doesn't necessarily make it. It's bad. more like covered. It's like covered? I think the word of the name. The name. I mean, the word comes from being covered, not so much. As I said hidden, but I think hidden implies other things, and a cult is more like covered, not in the uh, you know like wide open view or whatever. Right. A bit more like that. Okay. Alrighty. Well, let's read. Are you fascinated by power objects and their significance? Yes. Yes. So am I. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about it. For, oh, for That's what we've been doing. Yes. The creation. We need a. Um, what's that thing called? A stand to put your papers no, on so that. What the presidents you can see use, things. you know, to talk and then they talk like they're looking at you. Oh, yeah. One of those where the words come down. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool, huh? Okay, we'll work on it. Right now, <laughs> we'll pretend we're looking up while we're looking down. I can't do it. Okay. I'll, you ready? Look, look. Okay. You read. I can't see it now. I took off my glasses. <laughs> Why did you take off your glasses? Well, because they look silly. What's no, if you impor- put them there, so it's behind the camera. Right? And for you there. guys who are listening, we're just missing about with the script, the newsletter. Papers. All right. I think I got it. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, the creation and culture of power objects is ancient. Ancient. Yes. Not only has it been with us for as long as we have existed. What? Yes. The creation and culture of power objects have been with us as long as we have existed? Yes. Yes. Who's now which we are we talking about? Humans. Humans as humans with souls and bodies. Yes. As long as there have been humans with souls and bodies, there have been power objects. Yes. And... The culture of it. Okay. Yes. Today, they're used in religion, commerce, education, governance, and consumerism. Consumerism. Yes. And many, many other aspects of our lives. Education, governance, religion, commerce. Pretty much everywhere. Did you know, for example, that most of the company logos you see today are sigils? Mystical tools to empower the company brand. I did know that, yes. Well, you wrote it. You better know it. <laughs> did you know it? Did you know that? I had an inkling because yeah. they t- they seem to value them so highly. And I thought logos, yeah. our brand logo, brand. our brand is uh, our our self image. Yeah. And you can't yeah. let your brand be diluted. And yes. Don't want to mess it. Don't want to alter it. Keep your brand all that stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus also, it is a language, a communication system with the universe and also to with other people. Oh, we lost our newsletter. It went flying down the floor. Okay. Okay. Here, I'll hold it for you. 
to look down. <laughs> got it. You got it. Hold. For you who are listening to this, we dropped our newsletter and we're messing about with it right now. Trying to make it stay and not fall down. <laughs> it's It's got a mind of its own. It is its own object. It knows it was... Never mind. Okay. Did you know that most company logos you see are sigils? I did not know that, although mm-hmm. you had told me that, and mm-hmm. I kind of knew it, so I kind of like didn't, and then I did. Yes. I did when you told me. Okay. Oh, good enough. Did you know that the dollar bill and most other money notes and coins in the world are covered with alchemical and mystical symbols? I most definitely did know that, yes. Yes, yeah, that's been I around for a while. Because I have been down the rabbit hole on those yes. before. You look at that and you go, oh, wait a minute. We were just reading about Roman coins, remember? And they had certain things that were allowed on them and things that weren't. Yes, yes. yes. And then some people broke the rules, so uh, they had to go. Yes, yes. And the U.S. dollars has all those pyramids with the eye yeah. and, you know, the yeah. stuff and the stuff and the mm-hmm. Masonic stuff and all the things. Right. Yeah. And the Canadian ones has a maple leaf. Did you know that? Yes. And you were uh, talking about that the other day. I was talking about maple leaves and yes. money. Yeah. On Walk With Me Now, yeah. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're not there, you Road might connection. check it out. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sigils and symbols are used to infuse an item, a company, or a person with power. Lots of power. Uh-huh. So. What is power? Power is defined in this reality as the ability to do. Yes, Power infused in your money, power infused in your sigil, that is your company. There's, yeah, you can see how they function together, but it makes you think a couple of things. Okay. First thing, infuse a company, an item, or a person with power. Where does the power come from that infuse them with? It is all around us. So it's the always, ability to do is always there. So it's very, always been there, always yeah. is there, and it's just tapping into that bottomless pit of yes, power. Bottomless, ability. not bottomless pit. We'll call it a uh, <laughs> infinite source. Infinite source. That sounds <laughs> <laughs> nicer. Yeah. So the infinite source of power is simply tapped into. Mm-hmm. Are some symbols, sigils, are those things used to absorb other people's power for your own use? Are they yes. like, they do have dark power? They do. Some of them? Yeah. A lot of them are power over others, and a lot of them are not power over others, empowering. And, um, yeah, it's like there's a difference, actually, in between these two things. So you wouldn't necessarily infuse yourself with the power of a company's sigil, necessarily, because is it, is it just neutral power, or is it power that's directed specifically? It's directly specifically, yes. So if I wear, like, a swoosh... You know, swoosh. A swoosh. A swoosh. I might think of myself as Apollo, but there's also a company that makes shoes. Yes. Uh-huh. I think it's Apollo. Whoever the fast one is, Mercury. <laughs> I'm not up to date. No, I don't think it's either of those, but I know what you mean. So if I were to put that and wear that, am I powering the, the company, company, not yes. myself? Correct. In fact, you're actually sending your power to the company. So in a sense, that is something Depleting of a... your power. Well, how come they put that all over their athletes? Yeah, athletes are powerful, full of power. And they're absorbing their power? Yeah. Well, it's kind they of channeling. They probably must be able to use it, too, to make their mm-hmm. athletes better than the other guys' as athletes. Because whoever's no. wearing the wrong colors or the wrong symbols, they're not going to win every every game, like the ones wearing the right no, symbols. No, it doesn't work that way. There's other, there's other things involved in the playing and winning or losing of games than just sigils. So they have a very limited use? They're mostly using the players for uh, channeling the power of others through the player into their company. Okay, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Why do they have to tap into other people in order to get the power? People are creators. The infinite source has infinite power, so why would they bother channeling it through people? Because people are creators. The more people that are focused on something, the faster it happens. So what does Coke want to happen? Because, you know, there's a lot of Cokes <laughs> everywhere on the planet. <laughs> That's That's what they want is just yeah. everywhere on the planets. Mm-hmm. At some point, they got to get tired of that and want to do something with it, right? With the power? Well, 
they usually siphon it in the form of profit and they use it however they want. Right? That's where the money exchange thing and comes in and they're channeled into power to do. So as soon as you discovered this, you started to use this knowledge for your own goals? Mm -hmm. I did, yes. yes. What, what's your goals? I have a goal of delivering the power, the message of empowerment to the masses. Well, you can read it. Yeah. The facilitation okay. of the empowerment of people on earth who have chosen to embody the high frequency paradigm and create a resonant reality here. Yes. In long <laughs> In words. other words. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very nice. I like it. Can That's we repeat a, that one? The facilitation means to make it easier. Right. Of the empowerment of the people of, on Earth. On Earth. Yes. Who've chosen to, to embody, embody the, the high frequency, frequency paradigm, paradigm and create a resonant reality here. So people who, you know, they want um, an end to war, an expansion of awareness, beautiful lives and looking after children and old people and the disabled and all that type of stuff. How about, how about the empowerment of people on Earth who've chosen to be here to experience this time of split mm -hmm. as light beings? Mm -hmm. Are those power objects good for them too? Yeah. Anybody who's a light being? I actually use my power objects so that people cannot use it for negative things. So I, I program them so it's impossible for them to be used for a power over others reality. But everything else is good. So if a person wants to attract love into their lives, love is always a high frequency energy. It's only mm -hmm. the programs and the other nasty things around what we believe love should be is that negative. But the actual energy is very positive. So did one for those. And the wealth, I think people are very capable of using their wealth to create really beautiful lives for themselves on earth. So I did one for that. Nice. And the lifting of the veil of forgetfulness for those who choose to do that, that's also good. It is good. That one is nice. Yeah. I put that one in the funniest place. Mm, what? On my yeah. TV. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sort of and like, then, I think it, of like a... Because uh, you um, like to watch TV. So. I like to watch TV, but not, I don't like like watch Channel 9 news or something like that. Right. But I watch the YouTubes or I yeah. watch my videos or, mm -hmm. you know, shows. That you enjoy, but you I choose. Enjoy that I choose, but I have my sigil on there right. in see-through. Yeah. So I'm kind of looking at the sigil at the same time I'm watching my show. That's good. Kind of like dilutes or dinette. It not well, dilutes. It, it kind of like spends your awareness. Spends my so awareness about what's you. happening in the show. And the first yeah. time in my life, a week or two ago, mm -hmm. I was watching a show. I was even watching with you. And we were like, should we watch the next one? And I'm like, no. Yeah, no. I remember that. I mean, I was fascinated with these books and this show. The very idea of the show 20 was years ago was yeah. like, oh, I wish I could see the show. Right, right. But then I watched the show and I'm, and then I remembered the book it was like that too, kind of. <laughs> it's like, wow. That was really it's not, I'm not going to tell. Yeah. I couldn't tolerate that. Yeah, it was very low frequency show. Very low frequency. Yeah. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Yeah. With all sorts of uh, violations of the human body, death and gore and gore and just betrayal and all sorts of nasty stuff, yeah. It was an interview with a vampire, by the way. Yes, it was. Which I with the vampire. really liked the book. And then I remember we talked about the interview with the vampire, even though it's supposed to be a vampire. Yes. Interview with whatever vampire. <laughs> so interview with an angel, interview with an alien, mm -hmm. and interview with a psychic assassin. Mm -hmm. Those are all same general title. And at the time that you were titling your books, you went to research to see if and they were already used. Right, right. And they weren't. No. Well, the, there was one that was used, but I felt it was fine to do it anyways. Right. But at that time, you had looked at interview with a vampire, mm -hmm. and now it's interview with the vampire. You instead. know, at the time, when I saw the interview with the vampire title, and it's very, very famous at the time, and I thought to myself, dang, I wish they hadn't called it that, because every time people... Well, look for my book. They'll get that They're one gonna instead. They're going to get the vampires, yeah. Right? Because of the search engine al logarithms or whatever. And so I wish I had named it, like, maybe something else, like The Vampire. I don't remember <laughs> thinking that, you yeah. know. And then suddenly, that's what it's called. Yeah. Oh, it's very funny. Well, it's when we were looking at um, 
Mandela effect, remember? Yes. You start yeah. to find those things. Yeah. And you said they have always neat. existed, and you've yes. always been aware of them, but mm -hmm. most other people just weren't. The timeline shifts? Yeah. Yes. So, yes, let's talk about that for a minute, because, yeah, that's right. Timeline shifts have happened since I remember consciousness being here on the planet when I was a baby. And they kept happening all the time. And... I noticed very early on that people could not remember ha the previous timeline we were in and then we were in this one or whatever. And I noticed that most people were very, very unaware of it. I don't think I ever met anybody who was actually aware of a timeline, a timeline shift. And the only outer evidence would be filters through righteousness when my brother and sister, for example, would recall an event when they were younger, let's say that now they were teenagers, they were younger. And one of them would remember it very clearly in a one format. And the other one would remember it very clearly in a different format. Very radically different. And then, of course, you know, I could, I, I knew what was happening. But there was no way for me. I didn't even have the vocabulary at the time to even express what I could see and, and perceive. Mm -hmm. And... um and as I grew older, you know, different things would happen. And what, one really, one that really stuck with me was when um, I was walking down the street in London. And this man started walking towards me. And we looked at each other and we both went, oh, my God, it's you. Where have you been? It's like, oh, my God, I haven't seen you forever. And then he suddenly stops and says, wait. <laughs> and he looks at me, says, no. Where that's not our not, that's not this timeline. <laughs> this, <That's>, <laughs> this is this is a different one. We don't know each other in this one. And I'm like, oh my god, you're right, you're right. And then we just <laughs> carried on walking past each other, that's like hilarious. without any exploration at all. Right. That's hilarious. So that was really funny. I think it was like a brother or something. I mean, really close, you know, mm -hmm. a best friend or a brother or something like that. And then pff, didn't, we didn't, neither of us thought of, hey, let's get our numbers, let's get together, compare notes, nothing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Boom. Bye. No words and not even bye. Not even bye. Not even bye. Oh, my gosh. And maybe, oh, that's a shame. And that's it. See you next time, Lion. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to sigils and power objects and occult things. Okay. okay. So... <clears throat> You create power objects. I, I say you do. Mm -hmm. I remember you gave me one just last week, mm -hmm. two weeks ago. Well, actually, you took Three it. weeks ago. Well, you said, what do you think? And I said, thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I thought that was what you were asking me. That's how I remember it. What do you it. think, honey? Oh, thank you. you. And you come, thank you. Very nice. It. <laughs> I need to, you know, try this it out. This is how to use it. <laughs> this is how you hold it. It needs a string here, though, honey. Can I have a string? <laughs> I remember that. And then I decided to hang it right above our bed. Yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. I was really going to test it. I wanted to test it for tonight because I've had experience with power objects before. And I was curious how it would be this particular power object was about um, enlightened awareness. Yes, enlightened awareness. Yes. And so I was wondering what enlightened awareness would feel like if you were asleep. Right. I was imagining maybe I have some like stellar lucid dream, you know? Oh, that would have been great. That's what yes. I was hoping for. Yes, yes. And instead I was asleep and aware that I was asleep the entire time I was asleep, which didn't feel like I was sleeping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, <sighs> I, yeah, it was really hard to sleep. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, you know, of course, if your awareness is expanding, you're not going to be sleeping because for sleeping, you have to shrink your awareness. And I kept thinking that at one point I got up and I maybe took a nap on the sofa and then came back. And it was, you know, like you were turning and twisting in the bed and everything. And I said, I wonder how long this is going to last. I go back into bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then what happened? Well, like, I said, okay, okay, enough. I get it. I took it down and I put it in another spot. I wanted to see how far away it could be. And then the effect would diminish enough that I could go to sleep. And we fell fast asleep we went so fast. Asleep in like, like 30 seconds. 30, not even 30 not seconds. Even 30 15 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Oh. We were out. Yeah. So. You're powerful. That's a scientific experiment yeah, and it yeah. definitely you know yeah i mean oh and the other one i made these bracelets called powerful mystic oh yes I remember and this. um I, you're going to be i'm going to put them in for auction 
right? Because they are very powerful. But anyways, <laughs> first night again. I mean, no sleep. <laughs> so the way in which to hold your power objects when you don't want them to keep you up or anything, or you're doing something else and you like um, you don't want them to be completely active. Um, you, what I learned from my family, which is this whole technology came from my gypsy side, ah. from my mother's sisters. And um, they would say, wrap it in velvet, right? And mm. I never knew why, but I've always liked velvety fabrics, you know, mm -hmm. and velvet. And, um, and then at one point I thought, oh, yeah, because of all the hairs in the velvet, grab their frequencies and, you know, muffle them or whatever. It's like with a mic, you know, you have a sponge or whatever in front of a mic usually to hold all those sharp energies. Anyways, I didn't have any and I couldn't find it because, you know, since we moved, I can't find most of my things. And I found this scarf that is a fluffy scarf, like fake uh, fur mm -hmm. scarf. So I wrapped them up in that and then I was able to go to sleep. Um, and I don't know what your experience was of it, but that's what I experienced and then um two and you sold a couple yeah and both of those two people at home they said oh, i couldn't sleep. <laughs> i'm gonna try it I out anyways yeah. it's like we... <laughs> they couldn't sleep and they yeah. had to wrap it up in velvet yes, they're quite powerful uh, they are but it's it's fun to you know experience that and it's fun to test it out test it out and yeah. yeah i mean some people like to buy mine and they are because powerful because of the lineage and also i know what i'm doing um but i like to empower people and so i've i've been thinking about a class or a workshop to do so everybody knows how to do it yeah, but still some people like myself would just rather you build it mm -hmm. and then I'll buy it from you. <laughs> yes. Either but one. It's like, okay, said, show me how to do it. Good. Thank you so much. Yes, if you're not around, good. I can uh, both is make good. my own if I have yes, to. Yes, both is good. But both if I don't have good. to make my own, I could just go get one. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yeah. yeah. doesn't make it... Uh, and also any people out there who really get, um, infuse or like love making power objects... They can put them out on the internet and other people can buy them from them, you know, maybe because they'll know how to do it really good. Maybe if they're walking in hours, they could put it on the um, classifieds. Sub, 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 sub classifieds there. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, how does one create a power object? Good well, question. Well, there's so many ways to do this that it took several lectures to get all the information out. If you like the idea of learning how to make one, answer this podcast on the telegram chat or to email with a yes i'll attend <laughs> yes and uh we'll do our best to make sure that you uh have mm -hmm. access to the link yes to where you can join that how to make power objects and sigils you class can go when to, it shows up I, also you can go to ibinsacademy.com and put your name down on the waiting list for the workshop it, oh you think there's one of those there yeah there's a waiting list for the workshop right there where mm -hmm. in ibinsacademy.com but that's Okay, ibenzacademy.com. Yeah. Right. Make sure that's different. That's different than anelibenz.com. Yeah, you can get in the newsletter there. We can, you know, let everybody know when it's out. <laughs> okay. There's lots of uh, lots of ways. And, lots you of know, ways. get a hold There's of lots us. Lots of ways. Lots of ways. Get a hold of us. We won't lose you. Mm -hmm. We'll find you. Anyway, that's to join the lecture. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure if you are interested in the lecture and you don't decide to, you could probably see a replay or you could just buy our own sigil or buy your own yeah, exactly. power object that somebody yeah. else has made yeah totally. i've noticed that before we get into ba buying other ones mm -hmm. i bought quite a few over the years yeah and i have noticed that um they become very interesting for a little while and sometimes they just start to fade fade away in interest hmm. and um some of them i don't notice anything and some mm -hmm. of them, I notice the effect if I'm around a bunch of people who are enthused about it, too. <laughs> you know? They seem to be alive, in a sense. They're not a static object that has a 42 watts, and you flick the switch and it's on. Mm -hmm. They have an interaction to them. Yeah, you know? especially if they're made with crystals, I find. Mm. Yeah. I say that... So, how does one create a power object? Well, there are so many ways to this. Oh yeah. If, oh yes. Yeah, so so yes, I'll like attend. It. You can yeah, put okay. it on the 
I, talk uh, yeah. with me now yes, or something yes, like I'll that. Yes, I'll attend. Yeah. Just, you know, say, hey, I'm yeah. interested. Telegram. Telegram or an email yeah. or however you get a hold. Mm-hmm. And if you say, yes, I'll attend, or yes, I want to buy one, I would rather just get one. That's cool, too. You can say what you like. <laughs> I said that talk in cheek as I know that a lot of people want to do stuff, but not everyone commits to doing it. Yes. When I looked at the energy of releasing some of this powerful knowledge and letting others learn how to make these objects, it felt to me that there are many, many people who are ready to do so. I spoke to Ivan's Academy team to see if they would put on a workshop on the power objects. They said, yes. So we started designing and creating the material. Of course, as a mystical act in itself, the creation of the material loaded with en- mystical energy and power, and thus is very fluid. The core energy will be to have small groups of students taking the workshop, which will be delivered. Um, I can't remember how many. I think it's one, one, lect- one workshop per week for three weeks. And I don't know how often that's going to be. The, what I have here is like the workshop it will be delivered once or two months and every month depending on demand, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course, a workshop on this topic is not the only way you can get the know-how on how to create power objects. You can get tons of information for free on the web. You have learned to truth information, so there are no worries of making major boo-boos while playing with mystical energies. Do use the truthing exercise before you create items with instructions you find on the web. However, it is very important. Anyways, creating power objects is super cool, but although it comes with a couple of big warning signs, it's also not complicated. You can use just about any type of item and make it a power object. In a different article, I will talk about how I started creating power objects in mixed media and why. For those particular objects, I use canvas, acrylic, gold, crystals, glass, symbols, sigils, oil paints, ink, charcoal, chalk, cloth, trings, mirrors, the list goes on and on. They're so much fun to create, and they're very, very powerful. I will be showing the methodology on how to do one of those in the Abens Academy workshop coming soon. There are no limits. If something carries a lot of important significance and strong meaning to you, then you can use it. But a word of warning. Are you ready for the warning, honey? Okay, let me grab my... uh... Rocks. You found some rocks today? Oh, look. Yeah, that's one of my power objects. <laughs> you just found them exactly. on an X river. <laughs> in other words, a road. A road. That had been flooded <laughs> and all these river rocks yeah, came in. our road turns into a... So if you're listening to this, he's mm. showing all the little crystals and rocks on the screen. Look at that one has a face. Yeah, you? I was thinking it has a face on it. That's kind of mm. cool. One of them has a really good wow, yeah, that's nature amazing. spirit face in it. It's very Look at cool. Him. Very He's cool. Right there. Yeah. We maybe put a photo. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to put a photo on that. My goodness. Yeah. Spirit of the river so, there. A word of warning. Okay, I'm listening. Don't violate other people's free will. Okay. Never do a power object to affect a particular person or impose your power over them. All right. Of course, it won't work if they don't give consent, but it is also true that most people give their power away to anyone who will take it. Yes. So, don't abuse that fact, okay? Do not abuse that. It tends to, you know, depending on your makeup, it tends to go sideways. If you do that? If you uh, abuse other, you know, use power over others. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I and mean, stay away not from for trying everyone, to make people no. do stuff against their better judgment and conscious choice. Okay, just don't do it. There's no, po- There's why? no point. Why would don't you? Don't do that. It always bites you in the ass anyway. You, here's <laughs> the best way to think of it. Their higher self knows better than you the experience they want to have. Yes. If you want to use power sigils and symbols but don't want to create them, go to our website and download some super cool high frequency supportive ones that you and your loved ones can use. They all contain the clause of free will in them, so they, they only affect those who choose them for their purpose the sigils were created for. Right. I sent one, one to my daughter. What, which one? The one at, at school. Yeah, no, I know which daughter, but which sigil? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the love one? Yep. And she laughed and laughed, and I bet she's using it. <laughs> she's been awfully quiet lately. Yes. Maybe it worked. <laughs> the love sigil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the power sigils and symbols, you can get them from my Ben's. Uh, in com. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can. You can. Whichever one you go to, hopefully there's a link to wherever else you need to get. Exactly. We'll try to make Or you can friendly. ask in the Telegram, hey, Iliac. Where the heck send, do you get those? Send me the sigils. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, and that's that's it, that's really. It. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I guess um, anything that focuses our attention on the universe mm-hmm. and anything we put a little power into can and does become a power symbol and sigil. For example, the when we wear a ring, right? When we wear a ring. <laughs> it's an extremely powerful meaning, right? Yes. And that is both spread around in society, but also in ourselves. You can feel that energy. I remember for a few weeks or whatever, I I don't have... Cla- but that was my, my disguise. Now they're going to see who you are. It's okay. Uh, they no. made it this far, they can see. Larry pulled my glasses off me. It's really cold You're here You look very today. cute, honey. It's very cold. Anyways, I still have my hat on. So, a few months ago, weeks ago, I don't know, I guess I'm not very good with linear time. But some time ago, and I'm not very up on what hand you're supposed to wear your wedding ring on. Anyways, I was wearing it on my other hand for a while. And my body kept touching my... Because here in the States, you wear it on your left hand. Mm Mm-hmm. My body kept touching that hand, going, where's my ring? Where's my ring? It's it's over here. It's fine. And he kept going, where's my ring? Where's my ring? It's like, no, no, it's it's fine. We have it. You know? And eventually, I looked at your hands, and I thought, oh, wait. That's on that hand. So I took it off, and I put it on to the left hand, and my body was like, oh, yes, we're happy now. (laughs) Because it's powerful, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's significant to our physical bodies, our souls, our society and it just it has a lot of stuff and that's just one little simple example of a power object cool yeah. so check them out yes check yeah. them out yeah yeah i think that's good for the week okay love you we'll check you out again in a few days see what questions oh, the Iliad, second hour Adelina come for up the with. podcast yes yes yeah. second see you then. hour okay <laughs> Love you, darling. Love you, too.